Good morning and welcome to worship. Um, as always, we will be celebrating communion this morning, so you should have gotten your elements at the back of the sanctuary. And if you're joining us at home, feel free to use whatever you have. Also, during the season of Lent, oops, I'm echoing again, um, we will be singing a variety of different hymns. So in your bulletin today, some of them are printed and some of them will be in the red book. Um, so just watch for that as we go along. I'm going to invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness and just give it a second since I'm still echoing. Thank you to our tech team. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin and heals our lives. Amen. With honesty of heart, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We confess our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. God, we confess to you. We confess our false judgments, our hurtful thoughts toward our neighbor and our prejudice toward those who differ from us. God, we confess to you. We confess our waste and pollution of your creation, our lust for material goods, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. God, we confess to you. We confess the ways we are unfaithful, for our anger, envy, pride, impatience, and dishonesty towards ourselves and others. God, we confess to you. We confess the wrong we have done and for the good we failed to do. God, we confess to you, have mercy on us. As tender as a parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above the earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis, the 15th chapter. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offering offspring and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir but the word of the lord came to him this man shall not be your heir no one but your very own issue shall be your heir he brought him outside and said look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them then he said to him so shall your descendants be and he believed the lord and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, deep sleep fell on Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I will give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 27 responsively. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers close in against me to devour my flesh, they, my foes and my enemies, will stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek God in the temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter, hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary and raise me high upon a rock. Even now my head is lifted up above my enemies who surround me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary sacrifices of rejoicing i will sing and make music to the lord hear my voice o lord when i call have mercy on me and answer me my heart's the message seek my face your face o lord i will seek hide not your face from me turn not away from your servant in anger cast me not away you have been my helper Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. Subject me not to the will of my foes, for they rise up against me. 
false witnesses breathing violence. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord and be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. A reading from Philippians, the third chapter. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many lives, for many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, get away from here for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Are we awake today? Is anyone awake today? Good morning. I'm, I'm not, if we're being honest. I'm a little tired. Yeah? Why, why are we tired today, friends? I'm not tired. <laughs> yeah. Now, daylight question, saving. is this the end of daylight savings or the start? I can never get them right. The start. The start? The start? All right, okay, cool. I just know it's spring ahead. What? So, I have a question. And my question today is, where do you hear about God? I didn't Here. Think I did that. That's a pretty good answer. What do we got, Jack? Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> you don't know? As usual. <laughs> As usual. You know a lot of things. Yeah. Dude, we had, we had an answer. We hear about God here at church, right? Where else? Yeah. Do you hear about God in Sunday okay. school? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and in church. Mm -hmm. And in church. Right. Where else do we hear about God? What did you say, Allie? At home. At home? Yeah. yeah anyone think... else hear about God at home? Sometimes? Mm -hmm. So when you think about God, what do you think? Is there a story or a picture that you think of? No? What does God look like? Do you know? Where is God? In heaven. God's in yeah, heaven. God is up in heaven. 
Do you ever look up at the sky and wonder if the clouds move just right? Maybe you'd see God. No, uh -huh. never. Just me. Okay. No, I've never seen God either, but I see God every day and each and every one of you. So I want to tell you, when I was your age, and I still watch it today, let's be honest, there was a show called Veggie Tales. Who's Veggie. heard of it? All right, uh -huh. Tina Gallery is very excited here. And the Veggie Tales told Bible stories. Do we know what they looked like? What? Yes. What did they look like? Tales, veggie tales. What did Veggie Tales guys look like? They were vegetables, right? We had tomatoes and Larry the cucumber. Right? Larry the cucumber. Something so silly. But they did a they did a song. And the one day, Junior, I think he was broccoli. He was really scared at night. Have you ever had that happen? You scared during a storm or you have a bad dream? Mm -hmm. One Maybe? time I had yeah. a bad dream. Yeah, just one time, only once? I'm impressed. Yeah. So they sang this song with Junior. I'm not gonna fully sing it, but I'll say the words. And the words are, God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla and the monsters on TV. God is bigger than the boogeyman. And he's watching out for you and me. And that was always something that I thought about as a kid whenever I got scared. And I still think about it rather often. That God is so big. God is bigger than the boogeyman. God's bigger than Godzilla and all the monsters that we see. And no matter what, God is still there to love and protect you. That's pretty cool, right? It's a fun song. If you go YouTube it if you haven't heard it. So we hear about God at church, we hear about God at Sunday school. Sometimes we hear about God at TV and sometimes at home. So I know that Jack and Allie have their bags for Lent that have helped them talk about Lent and God at home. And I've got some bags for you guys too that I've been meaning to bring over to you. So I'm gonna drop these off real quick with dad. And they're just a few little things for you guys. And remember when you're scared that God is bigger than the boogeyman. Thanks for joining in, Jack and Allie online. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> I love technology. How cool is that? Peace be with you. One of my favorite classes in seminary was called Jesus and Cultural Perspectives. And I went into this class thinking, you know, it's an 8.30 a.m. class and I really don't want to take it, but it sounds really interesting. Turned out to be my favorite. And on the very first day of class, my professor had us stand up and he took us on a tour of the education building at the seminary. And we looked at every single piece of art, which is a lot at the seminary. And the point of it, and the point of the whole class was to look at images of Jesus and the divine and the ways that these stories are told and then analyzing what it looks like and how that impacts us. This class opened my eyes to the ways that we picture God individually, as a culture, as a world, it made me think more intimately about artwork, words, music, the actions we do, I found a new love for church memes, but also for the fun theology t-shirts that you often see on kids or pastors. See, growing up, when I was the kid's age, I never really liked artwork at church. It just didn't do anything for me. We had that one image and I'm like, you know, that everyone else thinks that looks like Jesus, but I don't, I don't know. And maybe it's because I was watching Veggie Tales and maybe I thought Jesus was also a tomato, who knows. 
But that one image didn't help me in my faith. And so here I was as an adult in seminary, all of a sudden challenged to look at these images of God and to think about them, to bring out the questions, to have conversations with each other, and to build connections, to bring about deeper relationship and meaning, both individually and collectively. And what I grew to realize was that what works for one person doesn't work for others, because we all see the divine differently. See, artwork and images should be plentiful and diverse, because they're shaped by the words and the stories that we tell. And the Bible, as we have learned in Bible study, reads very differently to each of us in different translations and versions and contexts and time in our lives. And that the more images we have, the better. Because representation is good and holy and beautiful. And these images that we create, the way that we picture God, they're influenced by so many different things. They're influenced by our culture, our context, our experience, our upbringing, our relationship with scripture, a relationship with God and how we see and experience God every day. And so I invite you to think about what are the images of God that resonate with you? Where do you look when you think about the divine? And what images from scripture grab your attention? For me, I always loved Moses and the burning bush. The thought of standing there talking to a bush on fire, something so bold. I also love the image of God coming to Elijah in a whisper, and Elijah sitting in the cave hearing thunder and saying, no, that's not God, and lightning, and no, that's not God. And then all of a sudden, in a little tiny whisper, he could have missed. One of my other favorite images of God is the tearing of the temple curtain on Good Friday, that visible reminder that God tore the curtain in end of separating God from us, that God was here. We have a new hymnal we're singing a song out of today, and it's called All Creation Sings. And one of the coolest things that I think about this book, and you're welcome to look at mine or there's a copy in the office, but they have a list that's called Scriptural Images for God. And it is four pages long. It gives images with the scripture for God as a quality, as hope and truth, as an element of nature, as dew and morning, rain and sun, as an object, an animal, a woman, a man, an embodied person, a human, and a divine being. So many different ways that we read in scripture and hear about God. And using these different languages and images is so important because it helps us grow in our relationship with God. It encourages us to question and to dig deeper about who God is and what God does. All at the same time, expanding our understanding of God. So you may have noticed, or maybe not, but worship today gives us different images and depictions of God. Some of it included from me, some of it from scripture, and most of it in the liturgy from the church. In our confession and forgiveness, we hear about God as a tender parent. In the gathering song, we saw God as a walking companion. In our hymn of praise, we heard about God being with us and bringing us home. Our prayer of the day, God is shelter. Our first reading, God is a shield and a flaming torch. In the psalm, we see God as light, a stronghold, and a helper. In the gospel, we see God as a mother hen. The offering prayer, God is the host of the meal. In our Eucharistic prayer, God is the leader and the guide. In our communion song, God is a lamb. 
In our blessing, again, we see God as a parent. And in our sending song, we see God as the glue that holds us together. So many different images, and I invite you to look through the bulletin to find them all. But what do they say? To look at our scripture images, God as a shield. I think of maybe someone going into battle and holding up one of those big shields. And to think of God as that shield is something that we hold close to ourselves for protection and safety. I also think about God as light. Light as something that gives us sight and guidance, clarity and awareness. Light also being an image for the spiritual and divine. And also it reminds me that God is bigger than the boogeyman. Because God as light scares away the things that scare us. And God as a mother hen is one of my new favorite images since I discovered it in seminary. I used to just read scripture and it was what it was, but Jesus is saying, I want to gather you like a mother hen gathers her brood. And I have this picture of a hen going around gathering her chicks. Now I didn't grow up around chicks, but people have kindly reminded those of us who like this image, that it not only conveys motherly love and protection, but that a mother hen, when she is scared, is fiercely smacking her kids to get under her. As any of you have ever chased after a kid running towards a street or had a kid in a situation that scared you, you go after them. And you do what you need to do, pulling them away. It's not pleasant. The mother is filled with fear. The kids are filled with fear. But this image of God pulling me in, no matter what, something that I kind of like. Reminder that God is protecting us even if we're getting smacked around, even if we're scared, trying to get us to safety. See, all of these different images, the ones I've named and more, they resonate with us differently. They mean something different to each and every one of us. Today, tomorrow, and every day, it might change. And that is good. Because sometimes we need to see God as a mother hen smacking us around. Sometimes we need the God of light and hope or the God who plays with kids. Sometimes we need the God who shows up in a burning bush or the God who liberates the oppressed. Sometimes we need the God who weeps. And sometimes we need the God who is friends with, feeds, and washes the feet of the people who betray him, deny him, and abandon him. And how incredibly beautiful that all of this is the God that we love and worship. That we don't just have one image and this is all that God is. But God is so much more. And so I challenge you today and every day to continue looking for different images of God, whether it's an icon or a meme or a t-shirt, whether it's seeing God in each and every person. Think about the images that stick with you. Why and when, what do they mean to you? Dig deeper into what kind of relationship they build, how they expand your understanding of God. And use them to deepen your relationship with God and with one another. As a mother comforts her child, so God will comfort you. As a hen gathers her brood, so Christ will gather you. As a wise one counsels her friend, so the Spirit will counsel you. The Trinity of love will be with you. Amen.
We profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of opposition, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystems and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when, we needed, when needed for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You hear us when we cry to you. Attend to those expecting a child and console those who have experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving, especially those we name in our hearts before you. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You kindle faith that moves us into action. Guide children and adults preparing for baptism or confirmation. Empower Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, and parents who share their faith with younger generations. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious and holy God, lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. O oh Lord God of life, as you care for all creation, give us your peace. Be with our siblings in Ukraine. Let them feel your comforting and healing presence in the midst of these trying times. Guide the work and words of political leaders during this time of conflict. May they act with wisdom towards justice. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth are ended and who now rest with you. On the final day, gather all of us with them into your loving arms. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may share a sign of peace with those around you. Let us pray our offering prayer together. 
extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, you call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body and blood of Christ given for you.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. few announcements before we go. Uh, Bible study will be tomorrow night at 7.30 on Zoom. We had a really good conversation last week, so I invite you to join us. On Wednesday, we will have our Lenten midweek service um, in person and online. If you are joining us from home, the bulletin is available online on our website, um, and you'll want to bring candles with you. We had a beautiful service last week, so I hope that for those of you who participated, it was meaningful to you. Um, a few other announcements. Uh, Synod Assembly for the New Jersey Synod is coming up in May. It is online May 6th and 7th, um, and we need two members of the congregation to go as voting delegates. Go from your couch. Um, if you are interested in going, if you've never been to Synod Assembly, it's a really wonderful opportunity, especially because you can do it from the comfort of your home. Please let me know, or Joan, our new council president, know as soon as possible um, if you are interested. Again, it is May 6th and 7th, it is online, um, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. If we have more people interested, you are welcome to go as a visitor, um, but we do need two people to represent us for voting. Um, if you are on council, please sign up for devotions in the Narthex. There is a very big sign up sheet. Um, if you could just pick a month and say when you will be doing devotions, you're not with us um, online, you can call the office or let us know. Messenger articles are due this week, so if you have anything that you would like to add, please send that in. And we will continue our collection for Ukraine through the end of the month. Um, nobody else may have noticed, but from where I can see, we have had so many people come through our door this morning dropping items off. Um, so that was a really beautiful moment of worship to just continuously see people coming. Thank you to those of you who helped. Um, but please, this is not going to end. Um, so anything that we can do to help, I've worked in refugee resettlement um, and it means a lot, the toys, the clothes, the medical supplies. Um, so please talk to Sue, um, to Michelle, to myself if you need anything regarding that. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Yes. Okay. 
So medical supplies, yeah. Medical supplies are the most needed right now. They also, correct me if I'm wrong, but they are flying those over to Poland to try to get them as soon as possible. Yeah, toys and clothes are going on shipping containers, medical supplies and more urgent things are going on planes. Yeah. I think we're over 10 car loads. I think we're over 10. Well, there's at least two or three out there. <laughs> Yeah, so so if anyone's willing to load up a car and maybe help take stuff after worship, um, thank you to everyone who has already donated, whether you've brought in stuff um, or if you've donated money, um, that also helps with offsetting the cost of shipping. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, and Lutheran disaster response is also responding. So there's nothing else. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Run out the door. <laughs>